So Morbius just came out. Yeah. Neither of us watched it because it's Morbius. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but it's got a sick. <laughs> I mean, do you need another explanation? Who the hell are you, man? I am. I know. I'm just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. <laughs> Neither of us watched it because honestly, it's, it's Morbius. It's Morbius. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Okay. It's got a 16% of Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. I haven't seen a single person say on the internet whether someone I know, someone who's like in the online film space, say they like it. Yeah. It made $40 million on its opening weekend. That's not crazy good, but for a movie that got that panned, mm -hmm. that's like $30 million too much. Yeah. So my question is, you have a movie that's a comic book movie. No one liked it, fans, critics, and yet it was the number one movie in America. How come the only movies people are going out to see are comic book movies, even if that movie is getting really bad word of mouth. Was that a question to me or was it rhetorical? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And I, I think it almost comes down to like the idea that Marvel has a reputation. And I think the reputation of Marvel is that 90 to 95% of what you get is going to be enjoyable. And it's going to be, for the most part, friendly for your family right and uh i think that people take that to the bank a lot and they're like oh a new marvel studios movie is dropping okay let's go see it let's see what it's about because i've liked 90 percent of the marvel movies i've seen and they've been like my kids have loved them and they're like safe for everybody to watch for the most part and i don't feel like i have to like go and like i guess if you're a parent you don't have to feel like you have to go and like sit there like what's going to happen like right. is or is my kid going to like freak out and want to like run out of the which Morbius actually is kind of scary looking a little bit I guess for kids. Maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't be like I'm going to sign my kid up to go see a vampire fly around and like But he's a vampire up, doctor. So blood. like in a way he's like <laughs> he's a vampire but he's like also trying to heal people. Either. Right, so exactly. Like, yeah. We're at a state in movies where it's all IP driven. It's all um, based on audiences like pre-knowledge or expectations. And so studios know that if they just have these certain catchwords in it, these certain faces in it, yeah. it will recoup at least X amount of dollars. Yeah. And yeah. like I know, I know film has never and will never be purely artistic. It won't. Sure, yeah, no. But I think there was a time where there was a little bit more incentive to make something of artistic quality even though that wasn't the driving factor sure there was a little bit more incentive to do so but i feel like nowadays it is really much a monoculture it's very much like we know that you like all these being connected you know what this word marvel means yeah and as long as we throw that in there we're gonna get butts and seats right I feel like for some reason as human beings, we want so badly to be able to put the stamp of approval on yep. like a company or something and be like, everything that they do is good. So I right. feel safe doing this because or going to see a Marvel movie or whatever, like I'll enjoy it a hundred percent of the time. Okay. That's okay, what well, you want. That reminds me of something okay. you're touching on it is that why do you think it is that we're at a point where people will not go see a movie and I know this goes beyond movies, but people won't go see a movie unless they have a really, really good indication of like how they'll feel about it before they even see it. Hmm. Cause I think you're yeah. touching on a big issue as to why comic book movies are so ubiquitous and have a monopoly on the theater is like you said earlier, people hear Marvel, they know what they're getting before they watch it. Yeah. Why do you think we got to this point where people will only go see a movie if they like have a 90% like guesstimation as to what they'll think about it. I think people got are more comfortable receiving things that they're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I think studios or, or certain people realized, okay, if we like kind of pump out similar stuff with like similar lighthearted kind of action and jokes and like right. this is something people want like they they want more of this content and us kind of rinsing and repeating a little bit a little bit is not going to necessarily be a bad thing 
I think what yeah, I think what's tricky is it goes both ways. Like yeah. I I think two things are true. Studios nowadays have more access to information than they did in the past. Because if mm-hmm. you think about like pre internet or early internet, yeah. movie studios really only had box office numbers to give any indication. Yeah. It's like, oh, this movie made a lot of money, people must like this. And then they had to play the game of like what part of this did they like? Right. I mean, I'm sure they did like surveys and stuff, but it's not the same as like nowadays. There's so much data about clicks and impressions on specific movie content it's like oh this character gets a lot of impressions on this article this website they have all this data like how old the audience is so they know yeah what we want what age group is gonna is the largest yeah. age group that's going like, to see it like they have all these animals. everything yeah. feels so like made in a lab for us that it's it, like it's almost like <clears throat> i hear pete holmes talk about it a lot yeah uh where it's like I don't want you to get like I don't want you to always give me exactly what I want. Like because sometimes we're not always right. Sometimes I don't know what I want. Yeah. And exactly. I need to like figure it out. Like I don't want you to it's it's sometimes it feels like every week there's either like a new Marvel superhero TV dropping a TV show dropping yep. or like a new Marvel superhero movie dropping. And it like gets overwhelming at this point. And it's like impossible to keep up with everything that's going on. And it feels like at this point to a certain extent, they're being turned back on us a little bit well, and being like, like, well, how, this is what you wanted. It's this like is what how you asked social for. media has like really capitalized on how our brains work. Like social media knows that our brains stick to negativity more than they do to positivity right social media yeah. knows that like certain images really get your brain interested and it's like yeah but like that's how our brains work but you're taking advantage of it and you're you're like turning the notch up too high and it's yeah. hurting us but the other thing that's true is we have more options nowadays yeah so i think there another reason why there's all these comic book movies is like you said, like the studios have realized that is like what we want, even though all, all the, not all the time it's what we need. I'm not saying like we don't need them at all. Like I think we should no. have comic book movies. No, a hundred percent. But yeah, it's more attractive, like candy or something. But we have all these options to where we're less inclined to take a chance on a movie we don't know because we can stay home and watch Severance, which is amazing. Right. Or we can watch... 20 different reality TV shows or we yeah. can watch movies at home and so or we can make our own movies now on our cell phones and yeah. laptops <laughs> so I think the audience too is playing into this because it since movie theaters are more expensive nowadays and there's so many more options at home people are going to go out and spend money when they know they're going to get the biggest bang for their buck and when they know they're going to like it yeah so my theory is which I don't even think is a theory it's just a fact people are going out to Marvel movies more than any other movie because they know they're going to at the very least come away with a good time and like be able to talk about theories. I, I do feel like there are elements of this that reflect onto our culture a lot of like, well, there's no time anymore. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to spend my time watching a movie or going out to see a movie, I want to make sure that it is something I'm going to enjoy. Yep. And there's an element of dissociate, like dissociating a little bit. And like some of the indie films are a little better at holding up a mirror and being like, Hey, look at yourself. Right. This is what you look like right now. Don't you feel like this is something you need to address? You know, like yeah. if you're going to go see a movie, that's a little more artsy, like you may walk out, having a lot more of those things happening in your brain yeah. than at a Marvel movie. You're like, I'm just going to dissociate for a couple hours and like just live in this world where, you know, somebody can fall off of the Eiffel tower and not die or, you know, be, you yeah. know, the rescue, oh, be which rescued movie was or that? don't fall in love. I which, don't know. which movie was that? That's uh, <laughs> that one is um, Eiffel tower, man. <laughs> Eiffel tower, man. Yeah, oh, man. I, I that, love those comic books and his sidekick baguette boy. <laughs> I think the main problem is people want to know what they're getting before they press play because we've become so accustomed to having all these options. Yeah. And like just the way society is now, like that's that's bigger than movies. That's how we treat almost everything. I love theaters and the last thing I want is for theaters to close. Right. I love movie theaters and if superhero movies can help keep movie theaters open, 
Like I'm all for that. Yeah. But I think that we just have to like get real about some of the stuff that's going on with that. And, and I don't know if we'll ever necessarily reach a point where people are like asking questions about like, well, what entertainment am I, lo- am I watching? And like, how right. does that help the people that are making these things? I just, I just think, you know, a takeaway, I guess, is just to be open to that risk, you know, like, yeah, I, I yeah. understand that when you're spending money at the movie theater, you kind of want some guarantee, but yeah, but let's be honest here, man. Like eating our vegetables is easier than ever. Right. Like I, whenever Coda won best picture, I hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. The next day I went on Apple plus and just watched it. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, like uh, it's not always as deep as like, well, I spent money on a ticket and yeah. I didn't like it. So money down the drain. Well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like start at home and then like get a sense of like what type of non comic book directors you like and you're yeah. more willing to like take that risk at the theater. Yeah. Or just, you know, like do a little research on the movie, like read a couple reviews of a non comic book movie and get an idea like, oh, is this the type of movie I, I'd want to see? Mm-hmm. But it, it's really sad that we exist in the world where when Nightmare Alley came out, I wanted to see it in theater. But Spider Man was also out, and Spider Man was was taking up the theaters Nightmare Alley is supposed to show in, and Disney was asking movie theaters to pull Nightmare Alley. Oh man! Which they could because at the time that because they own Fox now, and it was a Fox film. Wow, but it's like, yeah. how sad is that? Or I wanted to see Licorice Pizza, and it was just not available anywhere for the longest time. Yeah, I have. I still haven't been able to. And I, I finally mean, was. I able wasn't to, able to see it yeah, in theaters. At I was all, finally so. able to watch it, but it was at home. Because yeah. I missed the the one week window at my theater to watch it. I just, I think my takeaway is like, I think both things can exist. Right. I think the spectacle and like the excitement of like a new Spider-Man coming out can exist. And the excitement of wanting to go see a new Paul Thomas Anderson movie in a theater right. can exist also. All right. Well, that has been our discussion on... Are there too many comic book movies? I don't know why I said it like that, but. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, the highlighted clips, you can go to the link below and listen to the full podcast where you missed out on some great anecdotes like Evan's made up superhero, uh, Empire State Man. Empire State Man and his sidekick Baguette Boy. Yeah, Yeah, and Croissant Lad. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, hey, if you missed out on that, you can go to the links below and listen to the full audio podcast uh also you can go to patreon.com slash why it's great and you can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month and get early access to the videos to the podcast and for a little extra dough you can get some movie commentaries and a 60 to 90 second feature on this podcast so i mean come on like what is there what is there not for you to love (laughs) all right guys thanks for watching see you next week see you